And we are back one final time to Tom Adams Field to see some of the trick-or-treaters on the field. Celebrating the win today is Wayne State so impressive, 42 to 14, especially in the second half, the way they came out, out of the locker room. And, and Rod, as we welcome you back into the broadcast booth one final time, an overall impressive win today for Wayne State. They keep it rolling, six in a row now, really setting up these last three games. Big time importance for this football team, but you, you saw it in the face of Coach Paul Winters. I think he loves this team he one. Team I think he's very happy the way they played two, and he's also very happy in an act off second half. Yeah, yeah, it's a team that they just don't have a lot of success against. I think this is only the third time that Wayne State's ever beaten Saginaw Valley at home. And we mentioned the 29-7-1 advantage that Saginaw Valley had. This is a different Wayne State team, and we're starting to see that in some of the wins that they get over the Hillsdales, over the Tiffins, over the Saginaw Valleys, that in any normal season can go either way, but they've chunked off and they've won all of these games against teams that are in that same group. All right, let's take a look at the, the highlights of this football game, starting with the first half, and Wayne State got it rolling early with that long drive, seven minutes and 40 seconds off the clock, capped off by Romello Brown in his touchdown run. And that big fella, he, he had an outstanding game, 29 carries, 159 yards. Just did a little bit of everything in terms of his versatility um, and shifting his feet around, showing the power and the speed. Corcoran on the touchdown catch here. He had five catches on the day for 54 yards and two touchdowns. That was the first one, probably his most impressive catch of the day. And then big play in special teams right here on this muff punt. I think this changed the tenor of the game. Uh, Deontay Nicholas able to pick up this, this punt. Gives them a short field because that was going to give Saginaw Valley an opportunity to take the lead and, and push it up to 14-6. That was Demetrius Stenson with the touchdown for the Warriors. And here's the second touchdown pass to Corcoran. This came toward the, or no, this is the interception, excuse me. We forgot about Larry Johnson's pick right down the sideline. That set up another Wayne State score. Right, you get that turnover, it gives you another short field that you're able to come down quickly and cash in on. And here's the field goal from Bevilacqua that was good. And that gave Wayne State a little bit of a cushion in the first half. And here's the second touchdown to Corcoran right over the middle as he spun out of a tackle and found Pater. Right, at that point, it's 16-14. It's and we're feeling like, hey, this game was a little bit too close for comfort, but Wayne State able to tack one on right before halftime. Best play of the day maybe from Zazula on this run. Third down and goal. He snuck his way in. Knee might have been down, but you know what? No replay. We don't mind. Touchdown, Wayne State. And they took a 22-14 lead into the locker room. And then the third quarter, as we take a look at the second half recap, was all Wayne State started with this field goal block. Yeah, and that's your special team's play that you need that stops them from getting on the board. Again, closing that gap. If Saginaw Valley had a, a gasp of life of, hey, we're really in this game, then they can get motivated to do something about it. Didn't happen. Here's Romello with his second touchdown of the day. That came in that jet sweep. They ran that play a few times, both directions. Found Romello Brown open on that left side. And here's the kickoff that found the open seam and Wayne State jumped on the football. Another special teams play to help them to turn this thing around, and this gave them the momentum with Zazula on the pass play here. Play action that time, Weston with a touchdown for the Warriors. Perfect throw from Zazula, and that made it a 21-point game, and then Romello Brown gonna cap it off right here, that spin move, what a move, video game like right there into the end zone, touchdown Warriors, his third of the day, 13th of the season. 159 yards, three touchdowns for Romello Brown, just a, another lunch pail performance for him. But this is what Wayne State has to get used to is games like this where they know what their strengths are. We heard Paul Winter say that they thought the defense would be able to shut down Saginaw Valley. They came and did exactly that, limiting them to just those 14 points in the first half and nothing after that. Let's talk about our Xfinity X Factor today. There could have been a lot of different winners, but we'll take the special teams as a whole with the plays they made. A punt, or a punt fumble recovery that led to a touchdown, there. a blocked field goal, a kickoff that – Wayne State recovered and also the interception right here from Larry and Johnson. It's just turnovers. And when you're playing a team that's close to the same level, turnovers, special teams plays are the things that make the difference. See There's the, block the black right field there. goal. And it was an eight-point game at the time of this block. I could have made it a five-point game. And Wayne State ended up scoring a touchdown via Romello Brown after that. And here was the big one right here, that kickoff into that open seam that Saginaw Valley couldn't jump on. And Zazula found Weston in the end zone for – Six more points, and, and a lot of things Wayne State did today well, but their special teams were huge, and that's why they're our Xfinity X Factor. Right, and it's one thing to get those plays and to get the turnovers. When you cash them into touchdowns and that one field goal, then that's when you, you start making a difference with them. You can't just have them. you got to do something with them. Wayne State did that today, and that's part of why they came out with the win. Let's take a look at the final statistics from today's game, and 
Oh my, all Wayne State. The passing yards, a little inflated at the end there from Saginaw Valley on that last drive, but you know, no, Wayne State didn't turn the ball over, ran for 270 yards. Look at all those total plays, and look at the time of possession. Yeah, time of possession there. When you when you only have the ball 17 minutes, you don't. That's a lot of three and outs, and you can't do a lot with that. The thing I look at is the third down conversions, nine of 16 for Wayne State, which means that they're extending their drives and making that Saginaw Valley defense stay on the field for just a little bit longer. You're going to win a lot of games with that stat, and that's that's one of the most impressive things on that page for me. Yeah, we talked at halftime about how Wayne State was only up eight with a big statistical advantage, but I'll tell you what, it ended up being a blowout, and the statistical advantage today was a big blowout as well for the Warriors. Our next telecast on CN900, we're not allowed to say the name, so shh, but there's a team coming in. Their initials are GV. You see it right there, Wayne State taking on the GV Lakers on November 12th, noon kickoff. That one could be for all the marbles, two big road games first, but that's our next telecast as the Warriors return home against the Lakers on November 12th for a noon kickoff. Again, if you can't be here at Tom Adams Field, make sure you tune in on CN 900. That'll do it today from Tom Adams Field for Rod Beard, Antonio Ortiz, and our entire hardworking crew, the best in the business. I'm Kevin Breckmacher saying so long. You've been watching Warrior Football on CN900. The Warriors win it 42-14. Have a great weekend, everybody.